All right, friends, so what happens when Elvis Presley goes to the barber shop to get a haircut? Where he parks his Cadillac right in front of the barber shop, goes inside, gets his haircut, and unfortunately, Barney Fife here decides that, hey, I'm writing this nice car a ticket. Friends, stay tuned to see what happened to Elvis on this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble. Subscribe. It's free. So there's Elvis with a sense of humor. Looks like he's trying to go into the cop's uh, pocket there. So where is this at, friends? You see the Malco Theater sign behind him, the uh, marquee and everything. This was Elvis in July of 1956. And here I am, friends, with my car in uh, March of 2020. Elvis was exactly in this area right here where my car is getting a ticket there during his uh, barber shop important appointment. Elvis was here. You can see the Orpheum Theaters where the Malco sign was, the same marquee area. I'm sure that could be original, but uh, it was there. You see the four windows. You see that? Check that out. Let's check the four windows out up to the left of Elvis there. There's the barber shop. There's the barber shop building. Elvis was here, friends. The photographer may have been a little bit closer right here where my finger is, but Elvis definitely was here in 1956. So friends, I did a little research to figure out what Elvis was doing out in Memphis and on Main Street to get a ticket and have a very professional photograph of him receiving this ticket. Well, I learned that he was with a journalist for Parade Magazine named Lloyd Shearer. And Lloyd wrote a great article on Elvis and took all these photos, and it appeared in Parade Magazine in 1956. So I'm going to read a little excerpt from what Lloyd wrote about Elvis during this time that he spent with him in Memphis when this uh, ticket was given to Elvis. As most Americans know by now, perhaps no entertainer in history has provoked so violent a hatred in one age bracket of the public and so fanatical a loyalty in another as Elvis, Aaron Presley. Well, friends, it still seems true today, right? <laughs> Lloyd said, This guitar-strumming Tennessean of 21 who can read no music, who sports a ducktail haircut and three-inch sideburns, who wiggles like a snake as he chants rock and roll love lyrics, has in little more than a year skyrocketed from unknown truck driver to the most controversial singer in the nation. Scientologists denounce him as the outlet for a mass teenage sex feelings. Clergymen call him riot insider. Parents describe his act as obscene, indecent, savage, degenerate, John Crosby, a widely respected TV critic, terms him unspeakable vulgar. Hollywood columnist Hetty Hopper writes, I applaud parents of teenagers who work to get the blood and horror gangster stories off TV. They should work harder against the new alleged singer Elvis Presley. And from England music critic Tom Richardson chimes in, I have never met Elvis Presley, but I already dislike him. I know that this man is dangerous. So, friends, it's kind of hard for us here in 2020 to, to believe that this kind of hate was written about Elvis at age 21. But uh looks like Elvis probably ended up getting the last laugh, right, friends? I mean, the guy still loved all these years later. Lloyd would go on to write, Recently, I spent a week with Elvis in Memphis. Night and day, teenagers surrounded his new $40,000 house. Many had come with their parents from as far else as Vermont. Some tried to force windows and doors or climb the fence into the backyard. Others slipped notes under the kitchen door. Samples saying, Elvis, you bug me. Elvis, you are the most, and I am internally yours. On several occasions, neighbors told me they had been compelled to call the police to clear the district of screeching female adolescents. Confided one resident, the Presleys don't belong in this neighborhood. That boy of theirs, Elvis, you, you ever see him sing? I sure wish they'd move. Here's what Elvis said to Lloyd in his own words. Th th those folks who accuse me of being vulgar, they, they just don't understand. I'd sooner cut my throat and be vulgar. You heard my folks. You've talked to them. They're they respectful, God-fearing people. They wouldn't let me do anything vulgar. The thing is that I've got an act. I, I sing. Uh, not like Sinatra, not like Crosby, but, but, li but like Elvis Presley. When I start to sing, I'm carried away. I spread my feet apart, pick the guitar, and the rhythm carries me from there. 
I can't help moving around. It's the way I sing. I've had friends come up to me, well-intentioned folks. Elvis, they say, you, you've got to clean up your act. You've got to stop squirming like a tadpole. If I stand still while I'm singing, I'm dead, man. I might as well go back to driving a truck. I'm not kidding myself. My voice alone is just an ordinary voice. What people come to see is how, how I use it. I can't understand why people want me to destroy my act. Everywhere I sing and I play, we got a full house. I play some towns for four or five times. People come back to see me. They wouldn't do that if I insulted their moral sense. Just because I thrashed around, just because those girls in the audience start shrieking when I do, what's wrong with that? They say I'm responsible for juvenile delinquency. How do you like that? I've never been in trouble in my whole life. Ask any of my school teachers, ask any of the police, ask anybody about Elvis Presley. Heck, man, my folks started taking me to church before I could walk. First songs I ever sang were hymn songs. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I didn't originate rock and roll. I just practice it. So the girls go for me. Hey, is that wrong? Is it some sort of crime? Years before I was born, they went for Rudolph Valentino, for Rudy Valley. Those, today, those same girls are mothers, hey, maybe grandmothers. Where are all them juvenile delinquents? Honest, I'm shocked at how intolerant people can be. I can understand why fellas resent me. Hey, they're jealous. Maybe I'd be jealous too, but I don't think I'd try some of the things they've pulled on me. Here in Memphis, for example, sailors get together from a gang just to get Presley. Hey, not long ago, I was coming out of the variety club. They tried to beat me up. That's happened lots of places, lots of times. That's why I've hired a bodyguard. I don't want to fight anymore. All I want to do is to make an honest living. They're not going to take it away from me now. Somehow, folks seem to resent success. They resent my clothes, my Cadillacs, the way I talk. Well, I'll tell you this, they're not going to take it away from me now. We Presleys were poor too long. All right, friends, so Elvis was here in July of 1956, and unfortunately, I'm getting a ticket also. Maybe I can talk my way out, and unfortunately, I'm not a musician, musician, singer, and I don't have any concert tickets to give her, but I'll think of something. I appreciate you guys watching Glow Trotting with Trey. Remember, subscribe. It's free, doesn't cost you a thing, and you stay updated with every new video I upload, which is every week. You sure you gotta give me this ticket, sweetheart? She's gonna let me go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching, friends. Remember, subscribe. Friends, I would just like to give a shout out and thank the young lady that played the cop writing me a ticket in this video. She's a security officer that works around the area, and I stopped her, uh, told her what I was doing. She was interested in Elvis, and she was happy to to play the uh, police officer, writing me a ticket. So friends, uh, she has subscribed to our channel, so thank her in your comments for uh, just being a cool girl. Also, I would like to thank the guy that uh, filmed me speaking here at the end of this video. He was another guy that was just interested in learning about what I was doing, and I showed him the picture of Elvis standing right where we were, and he uh, really enjoyed that. He thought that was pretty cool. So you see, making these films and people asking you about what you're doing, and then you show them a picture of Elvis, well, hey, they usually will become a fan. So friends, this is what it's all about. Once again, thanks for watching. New videos uploaded every Tuesday. Remember, don't double dribble, friends. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey. It's free. See you next week.